the seat taken. Nobody's in the seat, can I ain't taken, son. So this is uh, the back? It's the back. What is good? What is up? Welcome back to Sabak the Block. I forgot to turn my light on, but I'm about to turn it on right now. Hey. It is a very important election day. Election night is upon us. But we are briefly going to go through the Mandalorian episode one just because we have to. I am here with Emma Fife. Emma, Hi. how are you on this crazy, historic, bizarre night? Yeah, it's, it's a weird time to be sure. Uh, I just had a really lovely Twitch stream um, earlier with my community. We, uh, I was streaming Hades and we, I was letting chat vote on all of the decisions that you have to make in the game. Uh, which was super duper fun. Um, and then, yeah, you know, my um, my uh, child, my baby Yoda arrived Ooh. yesterday. So yes, I finally. Feel, I feel very blessed. Just in time. Uh, I, yes. So obviously, guys, as I said before, the important news of the day is obviously this historic election that is taking place currently right now. Uh, I think all of us here that I know of have voted. If you haven't voted, uh, it depends where you are. Some polls are still open. Uh, hopefully you have. Uh, if not, go vote and come back and watch this later because I feel like that's more important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you haven't voted and you're living in a state where the polls are still open, like go. you can watch this later. Yeah, <laughs> go. Go, vote. go for it. Why not? Uh, it, this is the time to do it. Uh, and that is obviously the most important thing. So that is why today's episode is going to be a tiny bit shorter, guys. Uh, skipping a few segments, uh, trying to get right into the Mandalorian episode. Uh, we did it, Emma. We're finally here. I know. Mandalorian episode one. I can't lie. I, I was feeling a lot of pressure. I stayed up and watched <laughs> it on Thursday night. That's right. I've been raising the house with me. Uh, yeah, I uh, I stayed up. Um, well, actually, I was like, I'm tired. I'm not going to stay up. Um, and then I decided to play uh, a little bit of... Uh, Hades, the video game that I've been super duper obsessed with. Um, and uh, I ended up staying up later than Mandalorian dropped because I was playing video games still too late into the night. But you know what? I ended up watching it the next morning and it was a lovely, lovely way to start my day, if I'm being yeah. honest. Yeah. So let's get right into it. Obviously, our Star Wars news segment is going to be all about the Mandalorian. So let's go to the Star Wars news. If you I can. heard a uh, story about you. I was wondering if it's true. Um, so obviously the big story is Mandalorian episode one. We did it. We got it. Uh, we were going through it as far as what is going to happen. Uh, but we saw it. Obviously, the first thing I want, Emma, is your overall thoughts on the episode. It's a 55 minute episode. So it's definitely a it little was bit long. long. I actually was mm -hmm. very surprised. I was like, oh, dang, this is a longer long. episode. Yeah. Um, my overall thoughts. Yes. I, how can you not just like objectively enjoy anything that Timothy Oliphant is in. Uh, mm. I love Timothy Oliphant. I loved that he was Cobb Banth, who of course is a character from the Aftermath novels. Uh, I just like, honestly, what a, what a great addition to Star Wars and the fact that he was playing a character that was already established definitely suggests to me that we're going to be seeing a lot more of that uh, as we go into the rest of this season. Obviously, that seems to be pretty confirmed by the end of this episode. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I definitely had a moment. And so this is like full on spoiler territory, because yes, as um, previously discussed um, on our last episode, when we were making predictions, I made the very bold prediction that definitely came true at the end of this episode or, or almost definitely came true. And we can talk about that in a moment. But um, uh, I... Uh, I got really excited when Timothy Oliphant was wearing, or when Cobb Vanth was wearing Boba Fett's armor, because I was like, yes, he's dead. And then oh. he was in the end of the episode. Ooh. Yeah. Shots so I, fired. I, I thought that he was going to be dead, dead, because uh, Cobb Vanth had his armor. Dang. But it's fine. It's fine. Blaster shots fired right off the bat here. It's about the block with Emma. Uh, <laughs> okay. So we know your thoughts. You're not a big Boba guy. Here's my thing. I'm not a guy at all, actually. That's true. 
you're not a big Boba fan as other people are. As, sure. as you can see that probably John Favreau is, as you can see that definitely Dave Filoni is. Sure. Um, I just feel like this is kind of, I don't think that Boba is going to take up too much of the season. If I'm being honest, I think Boba is going to take up maybe one or two more episodes, kind of finish this little story, story arc off. Um, on Tatooine, probably next episode, and then we yeah. conclude with that. I think it's more of a completionist kind of thing with Favreau and with Filoni combining their two Bobas, right? Because I'm, I'm assuming Favreau is more on the Filo- on the original trilogy kind of mindset, and Filoni obviously has that entire Boba backstory uh, coming from the prequels, coming sure. from Clone Wars and Clone um, Wars, yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like in that sense, it's cool to see Boba back, and also. I, I, let's let's just get right into it, Emma. Sure. Uh, uh, I, I guess Green Silop, our main topic, is mainly going to be about uh, Boba Fett. We talked about last week what's going to be his storyline. Right. We only had this little green Silop. So this little green Silop is going to be all about Boba. Do you feel like are we leaning more and more towards okay? Is it, is it going to be a confrontation? This is the title of our, our episode right now between Mando and Boba being like, hey, kind of like we just saw in this episode. Uh, why, why did you have this armor? You're not a Mandalorian. Blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Kind of okay. like what he did with Timothy Tim- Tim- Alpha. Right. Do you see that happening? I, okay, here is actually what I see happening. Mm. Is I actually see uh, Din Djarin being a little bit hypocritical because here's the thing is that the Mandalorians are a culture of foundlings and adopted children. And it's like Mm -hmm. anybody that wants to be a Mandalorian, like can be if they sort of like accept that way of life. And so I think that what it's ultimately going to be about is like Boba Fett dealing like embracing that identity even though like you know by the standards of like duchess teens regime he would not be considered mandalorian because like he wasn't born and raised that way but again a lot of the stuff that was explored particularly in what are now like the the expanded universe the legends kind of stuff is this idea that like they're like mandalorians aren't necessarily all human they're not all born and raised on Mandalore. And that's obviously something that this series is leaning into because of the fact that Din Djarin is supposed to have been like an orphan child that was found by the Mandalorians. So I feel like Boba Fett's storyline is going to be actually about him, like either fully embracing or fully rejecting that or like finding finally like a place for him to belong where like he hasn't ever really belonged anywhere. It's, so, it's the whispers in the back, Emma. Boba Fett is a Mandalorian. No, it's he's not though. Like he's he's, he's like, a Mandalorian in spirit. But he but this is the thing is I think that he could be, but like yeah. he has to but like that is a decision that has to be made and something that has to be dealt with. And obviously, again, like Filoni has done such a good job bringing back characters who were meant to sell action figures. Mm-hmm. Case in point, Darth Maul. Uh Darth mm-hmm. Maul ended up having an absolutely fascinating storyline with uh, what I thought was the absolutely perfect conclusion in Star Wars Rebels. Uh, the final appearance of Darth Maul with is Obi-Wan, one of the yeah. most beautiful moments in Star Wars. Yeah, um, It's just so perfectly done. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it for anybody that hasn't watched because mm-hmm. you need to watch it and also remember Samurai films. That's the one thing I'm going to say to you. Um But so I think that we're almost going to see something similar with Boba Fett in terms of like, are you, this was your armor. Are you going to own it? And are you going to like freaking do the thing and be part of this? Or like, you just going to continue to be a jackass out there on your own, like get with the program or get out. Yeah. 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 I mean, obviously there's, there's so much there and I want to keep diving into it, but before I do, Emma, I want to get into the the episode as a whole. Obviously the first thing I want to get into is, is Cod Vanth. Yeah. uh, A character that appeared in Aftermath. Obviously not everything in this episode is exactly like Aftermath uh, was written, but it still is very much in line with what Aftermath presented as Cod Vanth. The idea of taking up the armor. Um, 
Can I talk about the, the elephant in the room before I, I jump to your conclusions about Oliphant and Cobb? Okay. The, the elephant in the room, and I tweeted this out and I got like two likes. Apparently nobody's with me. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's that it, it, the uh, homie's a tall guy. He cannot fit in that armor. He got that <laughs> armor at Baby Gap. I was like, bro, why does it look like he's wearing a crop top? Like, I loved armor? it. I know I, I was like. It. Do you, I don't know. I, don't, I know you don't watch football, but Ezekiel Elliott, he's a he's an NFL football player who actually wears crop top armor, uh, like football armor. Yeah. If you look up Ezekiel Elliott, uh, he shows off his like belly like it's an actual crop top armor type yeah. thing. Uh, and I was like, why is he wearing like a crop? Do because, you see it? <laughs> no, I, I no, I do see it. But I actually yeah. really enjoyed that design choice, if I'm being okay. totally honest, because I think that it, it was a height it, difference. I know that, too. Yeah. And it was a del- it was a deliberate decision on their part to be like, oh, this guy is like not really this thing. Yeah. He can't even fit in the armor. Yeah. 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 But that's the first thing I, I just thought was really funny was like, I was like, I guess tomorrow Morrison is a lot shorter than Timothy Oliphant. So yeah. Canonically, that makes sense. But either way, Cobb Vanth wearing the armor. First impressions, Emma, what'd you think of that? Again, Timothy Oliphant is all that I need. I Listen, yeah. I think Timothy Oliphant was great as Cobb Vanth. I also would have been super excited if he was actually like the Mandalorian that Din Djarin was like looking for um, so that he mm. could get to the underground network to try to find a way to reunite the child with their people. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- Listen, he said, see you around. And I sure hope so. Uh, I also really liked the way that they explored the relationship between humans and um, Tusken Raiders because mm-hmm. that is something that we actually previously established in uh, season one of The Mandalorian when we went mm-hmm. to Tatooine. And it was fun to see Amy Sedaris again. Um, you know, she's very silly, but I think silly is allowed in Star Wars. And I thought that it was much better having her in an episode that didn't have that kid who can't act at all. Um, who yeah, was, too, you yeah. know, who played the the eager uh, bounty hunter kid Mm -hmm. in the Tatooine episode. I'm sure Chad is all yelling at me being like, it was this name. And I'm like, I don't care. I couldn't even stand to watch that guy. Yeah, that that Um, was probably my least favorite episode last. Yeah, I I totally agree. It was my, it was certainly my least favorite episode last season, but I think that they did a really good job, like bringing back what was really good about that episode, Mm -hmm. which was exploring the relationship between people and the Tusken Raiders. Um, and especially because, like, again, there, there's this whole thing of, like, just being understanding of the other cultures and people around you, and they're not necessarily evil. And again, like, Star Wars is something that, like, very much was founded on the idea of this battle between good and evil. And as we've gotten further away from that and had more opportunities to explore, like, just different points of view, mm-hmm. I think that that's always positive, And that's something that was done extremely well. Yes, that, that, that's probably the, the highlight of the episode for sure, right? I mean, it's the entire theme of the episode yeah. is the idea of working together with people that you have historically not worked together with. Yeah. Um, but like you said, that's something that George Lucas has always instilled in all his Star Wars movies. It's the idea of working culturally with different uh, species, races, cultures, planets, all of different ideologies coming together to uh, overcome a bigger, more evil threat. I mean, that's the empire, right? It's the idea yeah. of the rebel alliance fighting the empire and they're coming from all different planets, but they're all oppressed by the same kind of fascist, uh, oppressive authoritarian government. Um, and in, in this case, it's a, it's literally a, a giant dragon that spits acid, but it's the same kind of mentality of like putting our differences aside to say, hey, we need to slay this dragon and, and, and look past our differences, even though we are different. And even though we are, we, we do acknowledge what we've done to each other. I, I thought that was very strong throughout the episode, for sure. Definitely yeah. the, the strong suit. Um, I want to get to, uh, I want to get to the idea of taking this character from a novel. What do you think that means in the long scheme of the Mandalorian? Do you feel like this is just a, you know, opening the door to even more characters? Do you feel like this is a, a continuation? Are we going to get to see more of characters from novels or I'm comics? I'm definitely on the side of them incorporating more characters from novels and comics. Because uh, mm-hmm. again, I think that they did a, re- like, you didn't need to know that Cobb Vanth was a character from Aftermath to like enjoy that character in this episode of The Mandalorian. Again, like that is something that, 
this show has done extremely well is really reward people that are deeply steeped in Star Wars lore yes. while not alienating those who just watch the movies and who haven't watched a Star Wars TV show outside of The Mandalorian because for some reason they hate animation. Um, mm. So, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like Cobb Vanth is like, he's... He's uh, uh, he was an easy character to transition in. I mean, we already saw like way back with Rogue One incorporating um, the God. Yep. Mm -hmm, yep. My brain has died. You know who I'm talking about. Saw Gerrera. There he is. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, who, of course, was a character from mm -hmm. Clone Wars. So, again, like they already have a history of doing this and um I think that we're just going to continue to see that once again, like we talked pretty extensively leading up to the Mandalorian, how often um, or how incorporated we thought certain characters from rebels and clone wars, et cetera, were going to be. Mm -hmm. So I just think this bodes well for those characters showing up and based on the way that Cobb Vanth was handled, obviously he does not have as much like history and emotion riding on him as a character like an Ahsoka Tano, I still think that we are definitely going to see those characters. Yeah, which kind of leads me to my full sabak. So if we can go full sabak, mm -hmm. let's, let's, full let's sabak. do it. What is, what is going to be the conclusion of Boba Fett? So uh, let's, let's kind of dive a little deeper. So when we see uh, Tamora Morrison as Boba at the end of the episode, we see him with uh, almost a sand people outfit almost a tuscan raider outfit with the gaffy stick in the back and yeah. i think he has a, a a tuscan raider rifle as well uh which kind of implies that he's either undercover as a tuscan raider living with the tuscan raiders uh maybe he's adopted their hmm. culture maybe he was saved by them um there's a lot there as far as what has happened Ooh. with boba but it kind of leads to my full sabak and that is is boba fett one gonna have this, you know, head to head battle with the Mando, and two, is it gonna lead to him being like, "Hey, you're looking for Jedi? I know all about the Jedi. Uh, I know Mr. Luke Skywalker and all that jazz." As far as him being like, "If you want to find a Jedi, go to so and so planet." Will Boba Fett be the one to kind of lead him, or at least direct him on his journey? Hmm. I mean, the only Jedi that Boba Fett really encounter, but True. he was around during the Clone Wars. He, like he was a little know. kid. He's got to know that little green thing is like, whoa, that looks like a lot like that one Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be thing. like, that looks like a lot like that one Yoda guy. People talk yeah, about. I mean, I do. I do think that there is definitely um, something to be said in terms of him potentially being the link that is, even though he's not Mandalorian per se, able mm -hmm. to lead um, Din Djarin, like on the path to finding where the child needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, I do think they are going to have some sort of confrontation, but as I say, I definitely lean more on the side. Now, now I have this split since you brought up the, like, is he living with the sand people mm. kind of thing of like him being part of that adopted culture. And maybe it is more, again, I, th I think ultimately what we're going to get and I'm, and I'm okay with it. Um, cause I think that, you know, Dave Filoni is a good storyteller and he will do a good job with this, but I really do think that we will get more of that idea of like, and, and it's something that like the Mandalorian, the titular Mandalorian is going to have to confront within himself as well, which is like he showed up and obviously like Cobb Vanth is not living the Mandalorian way mm. at all as far as like Din Djarin's uh, sort of estimation of what that lifestyle is like. So sure, yeah, it makes perfect sense that he like wouldn't be accepting of him having that armor, but now he has the armor back, which again was stolen from the Mandalorians in the first place. Um, uh, as uh, one of the like uh, Mandalorian, I think it was like prime minister of Mandalore said in Clone Wars when he was talking about mm -hmm. uh, Jango Fett and how he came across that armor. Um, but uh, I, I do think that again, there is that dichotomy though of sure. Yes, he did steal this armor, but also you now have this person, Boba Fett, who's completely, displaced and is maybe already living amongst displaced people. So yeah. 
It's a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, that's why there's, there, I think there's plenty to it as far as diving into a character that didn't have a lot to do, obviously, in the movies, in the original nope. trilogy, uh, especially barely. I mean, he's a little kid in Attack of the Clones. Uh, he had a little bit of story development, obviously, in Clone Wars, but there's just, there's not a lot there, and yet there's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. As far as storytelling wise, as far as what he's coming to terms with, as far as his identity, the fact that he's a clone. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that, that his people, uh, I mean, that him is. That's literally a clone. His his entire race was used for uh, soldiers. Uh, it kind of. Now that I'm thinking of it, Emma, just because I originated this theory, I'm going to stick to it, even though people have shot me down every time. Which is, and, and we acknowledge. Can we just acknowledge? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but can we acknowledge the Camino in the room? Uh, the idea of the cloning is coming back, right? Because we, we had yeah. a little with the scientist in season one. Yes. Uh, who had the Camino patch. Yep. Uh, we we ha- Now that Tamora Morrison is back, I mean, obviously it officially confirms what's canon, which is that, you know, Boba Fett is a clone of Jango Fett. Yeah, oh um, yeah. That's, that, that's already confirmed. So it's the idea of like, the more the Mandalorian goes along, the more we get a little Camino-ness going on. Could we see a Camino, ca- Camino in the future? I mean, anything is possible, and okay. and again, like I, I, there is still the question also with the child of is this a Yoda child, like of Yoda species, name unknown, or is it a Yoda clone? You know what that's I mean? What I, that's what I've said. Like, <laughs> in the first episode of The Mandalorian, if you remember back in back in the freaking Jedi Council days, I said, literally episode one, I was like, that's a Yoda clone. <laughs> it definitely could be. It uh, definitely and, could and be. And I got a lot of crap for that. But now the more I see it, the more I'm like, hey, I mean, now we have an actual clone coming back. Yeah. Uh, who knows? It could be. Uh, and maybe he has more information on that. Maybe when he sees it, or if he sees it, he could be like, yo, I know that green little face. <laughs> Uh, or at least Maybe. you should know that green little face. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I just really, to be honest, I hope so. Cause I really like the, the, the prequels and the clone wars and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and anything that connects to it just makes me more excited and happy. But yeah. the fact that Tamora is coming back officially, I mean, we just saw him. Yeah, I, I, saw I honestly him. was shocked that they showed him so quickly. Do you think I, I will preface by saying I don't. Okay. But do you think there is any chance that he's not Boba Fett? Mm, you think he's like maybe a clone trooper or something? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, technically he could be any clone. Sure. Yeah. I, I just think there's way too much of a coincidence. A thousand percent. The fact that we just saw <laughs> yeah. the armor and Timothy Oliphant with the armor. Right. And, and he's that. on Tatooine. And then, yeah. 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 I, I just I, think there's a lot there that shows. Oh, no. I, I guarantee you it's Boba Fett. But yeah. at the same time, it's like you you have to address the possibility that once again, all of these clones have the same face. Yes. They're all Tamora Morrison. So, yes. you know. Sure. Technically, it could be a, a, a different looking Rex. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> yeah, it it's could be, it's it Captain could, Rex yep, uh, yep. with Kathy Sticks. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's Boba, and I, and I think that's what they're trying to aim for with the idea of what Boba represents inside Mandalore as, as a whole, right? I mean, yeah. the idea that, that he's just this big Mandalorian imposter, um, yeah. just doing the opposite of what Mandalorian wants to do, or Mandalorian wants to do. I mean, we, like I said, we had that scene, which I love, if I'm being honest, Emma, I think it's probably my favorite scene in the whole, well, second favorite scene. I'll, I'll get to highlights of the episode okay. after this, but the idea of him being like, take it off. And he's like, are you really going to do this? And he's like, well, I'm really going to do this. Take it off. Yeah. <laughs> and he just like pulls his gun. I'm just like, yo, okay, man. And he's like, all right, let's do it right now. And low key, Emma, just between you and me, we could have avoided this entire crate dragon storyline. If he just shot cop van. I the know the <laughs> he could have done it. I mean, he, he had the right to, uh, but- yeah, but he was like, okay, fine. I'll help you out. I, I'm feeling nicer and nicer now that I'm hanging out with uh, the child. Yeah. Which he, which he acknowledged, too. He yeah. said. Um, okay, so Justin Town said, wouldn't clones be gone by now? Look at how old Rex was in Rebels. First of all, 
that's judgmental. Yeah. Uh, as that's ageist. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm, we saw him in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, exactly. And on top of that, it's like he's, but this isn't actually that long after Star Wars Rebels. Like Star no. Wars Rebels goes pretty close up to New Hope. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. so this is actually not not too far off yeah. from that. Uh, Pete Wiz says Daddy Oliphant. The uh, best. Love uh, him. Paulo Lyra says, so good to listen both of you talking Star Wars again. Uh, uh, Raven Rangul- Rangulbai says he kind of looks like an umpire or a catcher talking about Timothy Oh, Al- Timothy Oliphant with his with uh, his mini armor. Yeah. Yeah. I-, I thought that was hysterical. I was like, yo, the baby gap armor is here. Uh, uh, Star Wars Thrifting says, I'm happy I'm late, but I made it. Uh, yeah, there's a... Uh, uh rb3 you, you want to jump in man oh no i was gonna say yeah thank you thank you to uh all of everybody who's watching us live if you want to support the show be sure to check out our link first cut dot live to contribute to the show that's how we keep on thriving that's how we keep these good people here so uh if you have any questions or comments or donations that you want to leave be sure to go to first cut dot live in the in the description and also in the chat uh, before we move on to my quick POC highlight, um, because I still have one and RB3 mm. has it up right now. Um, what did you think of of all the little cameos and not cameos, but like Easter eggs and references? Oh, like, like the crate dragon, the uh, crate which dragon. you saw the skull, like the skeleton of yes. previously, but C-3PO you never actually seen it. Yep. C-3PO walked by it. Uh, super dope. Uh, I loved that. I'm trying to think what all else there was. You saw, obviously, there. the one that stood out to me was a single file Tuscan Raiders thing. Yeah, yeah. They just always, tr- yes, it was so, yeah, just file. the attention to detail was lovely. The Massives were back. Mm-hmm. I love the Massives because oh, there's a little Oh, I will doggos. also just say that, like, the Banthas looked so good. Can I just say that I felt bad for the Banthas? I know, yeah. I was like, this Bantha doesn't want this. He doesn't want to be a sacrifice. Yeah. You can't do this to the Banthas. Uh, but obviously the conclusion was really cool. We got the- uh, Oh, the, I, it was really amazing. It just was cool. Like filmmaking, you know, and obviously it was a cool. television show, but as they like zoom across the frontier and the aspect ratio changes, it was- it, it was a very well made episode of television. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, I, I like the concept. I mean, it's classic, right? The idea yeah. of like, I'm going to go inside the monster and blow it up from the inside, pulling a Hercules on there. Yeah. Uh, for all for all you. Oh, Hercules yeah, fans. that was dope. Yeah, I was like, yo, he's pulling a Hercules right now. I love Hercules. Uh, but I, someone else said pulling a Jaws as far as like blowing it up, putting something in the inside and blowing the bomb. Uh, but either way, it's a cool hero shot when he when he came out and he blew it up from the inside. I thought that was cool. Uh, I have to give a shout out to the four center guys. Joseph Scrimshaw said that it was it was like a classic, like, you know, high fantasy, like small town slays the dragon type thing where you send the knight to slay the dragon. I was like, that's a really cool concept I've never even considered. But it was kind of like an old school, like yeah. dragon terrorizing town you must send your best warrior to take on the dragon. And that's kind of what the Mandalorian was. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, let's move on to my quick PLC highlight. And I have to do it, Emma, but my PLC highlight, I think you have it up RB3, uh, is Jango Fett, Tamora Morrison. Obviously, I, we all know you're not the biggest Jango uh Django Boba fan. I'm not sure. No, it's just um, that. No, I like them. Let me preface this. I like Django Fett. I like Boba Fett. I just think that not everything has to connect back to the sure. original trilogy. That's I, really what my issue is. I 100% agree with that. I, I very much agree with that. But but my thing is the reason why I wanted to give a shout out to Django, specifically Django and not Boba, is because in the original casting of Boba, Boba was simply behind the armor. We don't see who's behind Truth. it. But when we see the person behind this Mandalorian armor in the prequels, it is a person of color. It is an amazing Polynesian actor, uh, Tamora Morrison, uh, who is from New Zealand, uh, yeah. who, who is this, has this powerful presence, who has this Maori warrior spirit, uh, something that I, I love to see more and more in theaters and cinema. Obviously, we have uh, actors and characters and even directors like Taika Waititi, uh, we have Jason Momoa. We have people who are Islanders, who are Maori warriors, Polynesian people who are now being put more and more in films. And I, and I love their presence. I love their acting ability. They're passionate people. Uh, there are people that are amazing talents. 
so shout out to my Kiwis, my New Zealand people, uh, all my people of color over there who are now making it in theaters. And I, and I think that's a powerful moment where George yeah. Lucas said as a statement saying that badass warrior who's behind the armor in the OGs or whatever is a person of color. It's yep. a homie of color. I think so too, that in the prequels, you know, obviously this is a character who could have been anybody because, and, and on top of that, it's like, obviously Boba Fett created to sell action figures, mm-hmm. end of story. Uh, and, and they added more layers to his story in the prequels with characters like Jango Fett, who is his father, but not really his father. I mean, you know, he's a clone. Um, yeah, adopted but, father. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the thing that's interesting to me is like, this is a really early example of something that I actually think Star Wars is doing a lot of now, um, which is taking the opportunity to cast people of color Mm -hmm. um, because it's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. People are going to watch it. You know what I mean? Like they are confident enough in their brand that they're like, we don't need to hire this like big name white actor to get people to watch our show or our movie or whatever it is. They're like, no, we're Star Wars. Everybody wants to watch Star Wars. So we're going to embrace our responsibility as people that are in a position where we have the luxury of basically hiring whoever we want and we want to include people of color. And again, this is just a really super early example of it. And that is dope. Yeah, I, I, I really do feel that as well. But I also feel like part of it too is, is it's, it's this step of like, when I think of a Mandalorian warrior, when I think of a warrior or, yeah. or a bounty hunter, a badass, I think of like this this classic Islander Maori warrior yeah. who, who is comes from this spirit of just uh, a badassness and just a spirit of, of 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 battle, a spirit of defense, of saying, you know, come come get me, I'm strong enough to take you on. And we see that obviously now now more and more with again, I, I mentioned Jason Momoa, but that kind of attitude of like, if I imagine this space warrior, I'm thinking of in terms of of people culturally here, I'm thinking of Islanders. I'm thinking of the Maori people who are such strong people. Uh, and obviously we've seen that embraced a lot uh, in wrestling. I mean, The Rock has yeah. embraced that. Um, we see that embraced in other movies. But but I think that's such a cool thing that George really caught on to when he said, man, this guy has that warrior spirit. And I want to see that like behind the mask as far as like the space warrior who has that warrior spirit. Um, so I think that's really cool of George to do that to uh to this culture and obviously he shot the films in australia uh the prequels so a lot of that had to do with proximity as well as far as being close to new zealand so he had to get a a lot of talent from there which he did uh in the prequels there's a lot of australian and new zealand talent in the films and i I think that's really cool because obviously we have captain typho as well who comes from there right um but that that is something that if i'm being honest was really stood out to me and means a lot to me and 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 it's something that we see obviously now with taika who's big proponent of that, who, who loves his country and loves his people um, to be able to portray that. And now he's going to be the next director in a Star Wars movie. So it goes from Django to Taika. And I think that's, uh, that's special. I think that yeah. really is special. Uh, any uh, comments oh, or the applause. questions? Oh, the yeah. applause. Comments or questions are between. Uh, we from, don't, uh, we don't have any, uh, any stream sure. labs yet. Again, people first cut dot live. If you want to send in and uh, contribute to this lovely show with these lovely people, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, but we don't yeah. have anything so far. We can uh, read. You can read through some in the chat though, if you want. Yeah, I, I was just laughing at Justin Towns because he said there was some extra with the white beard and Return of the Jedi on Endor, and Filoni thought it'd be cool to say it was Rex. But come on, I was like, it kind of is Rex though. <laughs> uh, listen, I, th- I, th- I think it's, it's be, Rex. I think it's it'd be cool too, and I think that it's cool that Filoni said that, and yeah, it's fine. I, it's and Rex. It, Why not? It's yeah. It's it's yeah. It's, it's Rex enough. <laughs> Uh, the crate dragon pearl wasn't there a mission oh, yeah. in one of the, uh, yeah, the Knights of the Old Republic that you get had to get one of those? Yeah, yes. I was gonna say the Knights of the Old Republic kind of that was the other was thing. Referenced. I was like, I feel like there was something else big, and it was it was the crate dragon pearl. Uh, um, Bradley Burnett that comes from Bradley Burnett, right? yes, which the um Jawas not uh, yeah, no, the Jawas were very excited to find. I forgot that the Jawas showed up in this episode too, it was like an old, mm-hmm. an old a whole Tatooine reunion, mm hmm. Uh, yeah, uh. Did we talk about the the the, the, the pod racer that Timothy Oliphant oh was Oh my god, yeah, Anakin's, that's so it funny. It looked like Anakin's pod racer. Yeah. 
was it Anakin's pod racer? <laughs> Did hey, he just could find be. it? It could be. Or I guess maybe it was the Sam people that found the pearl. But we saw the Jawas in the scene where the flashback with Cobb Vanth getting the armor, which he bought from the Jawas, mm-hmm. who clearly like went into the Sarlacc pit and like retrieved the armor. I don't know, man. It was it was a lot. It um, is a lot because if you really think about it, I'm curious how they're going to explain it as far as how did Boba even make it out of the Sarlacc pit? Yeah, yeah. Because um, I feel like we did need- he make it out of the Sarlacc pit inside the crate dra- <laughs> Like did the crate dragon eat Maybe. the Sarlacc and he broke? I mean, out we that. see that apparently Beskar armor can withstand being swallowed by a crate dragon. So yeah, that's the other thing. It's the armor effect of it all. It's like surviving because of the armor. Totally. Uh, I, I think, uh, wasn't Boba's armor like something else though? I, I forget if it's Beskar or not. Well, um, in the show, it is now Beskar. Got you. Yeah. So Justin Town says, was, how do you feel? How do you feel about Boba's armor now being obviously Beskar as opposed to Dora Steel as it has, it has been since clones. It Since clones didn't have Beskar. Uh, yeah. So he's saying now that it's, now that it's Beskar over Dora Steel. Uh, what do you think of that, Emma? I think that uh, the um, uh, that it's fu- that that kind of, sort of like retroactively changing stuff like that doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily bother me. Sure, sure. I'm in the same boat. If they want it to be like Beskar, real Mandalorian armor, like let's go with that. Or if you want to have a twist and be like it's Dura Steel, it's not even be- it's not even actually made out of Beskar. Because again, like. That actually was sort of a plot point in the first season was that like Din Djarin was trying to replace the parts of his armor that weren't mm-hmm. made with Beskar. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then obviously in the beginning of the episode when we saw John Leguizamo's character mentioned that he wanted the Beskar as well. Yes. Um, what do you think of that scene, by the way? We haven't mentioned the opening scene of him taking off all the wrestling guys. Oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, I mean, we basically saw that in the trailers, we did. Uh, and it was still super cool. It was baby cool. Yoda's so cute when he closes himself in his little pod. <laughs> yep, yep. I love how he says uh, he's seen worse as far as saying you want to do this in front of the kid, and he's like he's seen worse. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, there was a lot to this episode. Uh, so much there. Any final highlights or thoughts on the episode, Emma? It was a really strong start to season two. Uh, again, my my only objection to the character of Boba Fett is that I feel like there's this tendency to try to connect everything back to the original trilogy, and I don't need us to do that. But again, I definitely like super duper trust uh, Filoni. He did such a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, with the character of Darth Maul, who he brought back from the dead. So you know what? If anyone's going to bring Boba Fett back from the dead and have it be meaningful and interesting and not just fan service, it's him. Yes, I agree. Uh, I think it's exciting. Again, to me, it has a lot to do with connecting it to the prequels, connecting it to Tamara Morrison. That makes it a little bit more exciting for me than just necessarily the idea of Boba Fett, but it's more like the idea of like, I'm a clone, I'm a Mandalorian, I'm a sand person like that's kind of cool for me as far as culturally what that means to boba fett as a whole um but either way if you joined us this episode thank you so much we really do appreciate you obviously you can watch us back on the replay if you're watching the election coverage right now you can watch us back on the replay anytime you want subscribe like leave us a comment let us know that you appreciate us uh, Emma Fife, where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me all over the internet, wherever Emma Fife's are sold, at my name, Emma Fife. You can find me on Ven TV, hosting the download Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch that lots of different places. YouTube, uh, my preferred is Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash watch Ben. Uh, I also have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Emma Fife. I did a super fun stream today with my community where they voted on all my decisions uh, in Hades. And it was really, it was really, really fun. It was really fun. I still want to play that game. I it's amazing. I eventually will. Uh, so you can find obsessed. me at Squad Leader Ace. Obviously, First Cut TMO on social media at First Cut. And subscribe to First Cut if you haven't done so already. Follow RB3 at Director RB3. And you can follow us here Thursday for our live stream, 6 p.m., where we probably will be talking about election stuff because that's kind of the big stuff that's going on right now. Yeah. Uh, so join us for that on First Cut for the First Cut crew. 
gonna play the game, play it 